So it's 3465. So for the $4,000 that we collected, of that, maybe $190 has to be uh, remitted back to the agencies that, that require those fees that we collected on their behalf, actually. That's it for the reports. The last thing that the agencies will be able to do is change information about their own agency. This is where you will indicate who should get those emails, what information you want to show customers about contacting for address, uh, what information you want to show them if there's a URL um, to send them to your website. The cities will be able to put in a statement that customers will see regarding inspections. So if you perform inspections between 7 and 5, you know, Monday to Friday, you will put an inspection statement here. And you will be able to change this whenever necessary. So if there will be a holiday or there an unexpected day when inspections can't be performed, if you put the statement in here, then customers will see that whenever they're requesting an inspection. This is also where you will upload your image. And we will have to set up some guidelines on the images because they will need to be a certain size to fit on the permit card and to fit on the pages where they, these will be displayed. But you will be able to upload your own. And you'll just browse, find your file on your local machine, and click Upload. Um, that's pretty much it about the update page for agencies. And I believe that concludes all of the presentation of the system. And now we'll go look and see if there's any questions. OK, the first question, part of the early discussion of streamlining the permitting and inspection process was that one inspector could perform more than one aspect of the inspection per visit. The system does not seem to allow for a multi-purpose inspection. If multiple inspections are performed during a visit, that permit card is on the site and they could, I imagine, check off whatever inspections are performed. When they're going back to the system, they could put in the result of each inspection individually. So pull up the first one, result it, say pass. Pull up the second one, result it, say pass. I'm not sure about um, the multi-purpose inspection concept and we'll ask the building officials to clarify that for me and we'll explore that a little bit further and decide if we need to do more on that. Um, good thought. The next question, a report on the total kilowatts installed to date or a kilowatt counter on the site would be an interesting outreach feature and would help support performance measures for the site. But another very good comment, all the information that's going into the system can be pulled out later. So we can do all kinds of really neat uh, queries and reports that aren't built right now, but we could build things in the future and maybe build things that would allow you to, to query uh, on the fly. We'll, we'll have to work those kinds of things out. Again, it's not part of the initial scope of the project. The initial scope is simple and clean and straightforward just to get it done. But once it's done, Anything that goes in can easily be pulled out, and that's a, a good, interesting thought. Next question, how will each of the cities receive permit payment, electronically or by check? A uh, good question I should have mentioned. That report that you saw, the financial report, someone here, a human, will run that report, and that human will cut a check. I believe it will be a, a regular check. And again, this is modeled after our current procedures. We're not inventing new procedures for a sunshot. We're just following what we do already. And that is what we do today. We pay other agencies by check. So we will use those reports to figure out how much and then send, a, send each agency the, the check for that amount. The next question, can the notification emails to the city be sent to various email addresses? Excellent point. The recommendation will be that you set up a group, an email distribution group so that emails really, these really should not go to individuals. They really should go to a team. That way, if someone's on vacation, someone else will see those. And the recommendation will be to set that up in your Outlook. So you set up a distribution list in your, in your mailboxes. And then in the configuration here, you put in the name of the distribution list, not the name of an individual. Excellent, excellent point. 
the next question, will we be able to assign more than one agency representative email at a time? You will be able to have multiple people who have permission to change the agency information. So if you have uh, John, Jim, and Jane at a city, you can give John, Jim, and Jane access to change information about the city, but there will be one email destination for each of those automated emails. And again, you, you definitely should set up a group for the email distribution list rather than saying the email will go to one individual person. Next question, will the check be sent to the building representative in order to designate appropriate revenue accounts? That's a financial question and it's kind of outside of um, my knowledge base. I can answer technical questions, but I, I don't know how the financial um, will be set up. And that's important to figure out, but it will have to be figured out by the, our financial folks. And we'll hold that question. We'll address it. Uh, next question is, how will reinspection fees be handled? The current system design, the current requirements document, calls for no reinspection fees. The flat fee that's charged for the permit, the $500, is intended to cover all reinspection fees. And the concept is that some permits will require no reinspection, some will require a few, but it needs to be included in the cost of the, um, the $500 flat fee. And um, oh, here's one more question. As new solar panel technologies come along, does the system allow for expansion, expansion of the potential new designs? Yes. Uh, what you did not see is the administrative functions on the system. And I'm kind of leaving that off so as not to bore you too much. But there is a page where um, the administrator for the system will upload new designs and new, new templates. And they can do that for the photovoltaic system, for the electrical panels, and for the roof. So whatever system comes along can easily be added on the fly to the system, and they will upload those template documents that the customers see. So absolutely. Uh, one more minute. It looks like there are no more questions. So I'm going to mute the microphone and hand it over to Mary Bell. Um, Please hold. Thank you, Andrea. Um, this is Mary Bell Feliciano. Jeff was um, pulled into a meeting, so he's not going to be able to provide the closing remarks. However, I hope um, you found the webinar um, useful in terms of providing an overview of uh, what we have developed so far. Uh, this webinar was recorded, so if you would like to have access to it, um, just email us at uh, sunshot at broward.org and we'll be glad to share the information with you again. Uh, we would like to ask you to please email comments to us by next Friday, um, February 10th, to the same email, sunshot at broward.org. Uh, please remember to sign up for the subcommittees that have been developed as well. And here um, you can see all the contact information, the email, the website, and, uh, and our social media sites. The next milestone, milestone for the Sunshine program is going to be the kickoff meeting that will take place after the agreement is approved. And we hope that's going to happen uh, by mid-February. So you'll be continuing to receive the weekly updates with all the information, uh, providing updates on where we are with the SunShot. And um, please feel free to contact us, at, again, at sunshotabrower.org, or contact Dennis at the, the phone number that has been provided on the weekly mm -hmm. updates. Thank you very much for participating in the webinar, and we look forward to seeing all of you at the kickoff meeting. <laughs>